1943, what we used to call the War Department, uh, took over two small towns in Washington State, two towns called Hanford and White Bluffs, two farming communities on the banks of the Columbia River. The people who lived in Hanford and White Bluffs were given a month or so to clear out completely. They were told to leave their homes, abandon their crops. Some of the farmers burned their fields in protest. The people did not want to go. And that was not helped by the fact that the reason the government was taking their land was classified. Uh, but two years later, on August 9th, 1945, the world learned the War Department's secrets at Hanford. The plutonium for the at atomic bomb that the United States dropped on Nagasaki, Japan, which killed more than 70,000 people in its immediate aftermath and tens of thousands more in the following years. That plutonium for that bomb was made at Hanford. This is a replica of that 10,000-pound bomb. Little Boy was the bomb they dropped on Hiroshima. That was a uranium bomb. But the one they dropped on Nagasaki, that one was called Fat Man, and it was plutonium. It was plutonium from Hanford. Hanford very quickly grew to become one of the largest nuclear facilities in the world. It had nine reactors. It employed tens of thousands of people, and it created plutonium for nuclear bombs throughout the Cold War. In 1988, the government shut down, shut down Hanford. Uh, the Department of Energy switched from the nukes building business to the nukes cleaning up business. There are billions of gallons of waste at Hanford. Uh, and cleaning it up has not gone all that well. Uh, as the Seattle Times put it earlier this year, some of the hottest radioactive waste from Hanford was funneled into concrete and carbon steel tanks that today are decades past their projected lifespan. Some have spontaneously heated up or burped explosive gases. 67 are suspected to have leaked. At least a million gallons of radioactive goo has spilled into the ground and is working its way to the Columbia River. Yeah, what everybody agrees is the most contaminated site in North America is right on the beautiful Columbia River, which, among other things, is the lifeline for about 10,000 farmers and dozens of commercial fisheries. This is, so the Hanford cleanup in Washington state is a tough situation. Uh, the Energy Department is in charge there. They hired the Bechtel Corporation to do the work. It's a multi-billion dollar project on a 600 square mile site that, again, is the most contaminated place on the continent. And now a senior engineer on site who works for a subcontractor to Bechtel uh, says something is very wrong there. Last week, Hanford engineer Dr. Walter Tamasitis, uh, who works for a subcontractor to Bechtel called URS, Dr. Tamasitis testified uh, before a Senate committee. The doctor told senators that after he raised concerns about the cleanup project being dangerously rushed by Bechtel and URS in order to hit deadlines and get bonuses, after he raised concerns that shortcuts being taken with Hanford's radioactive mess could lead to more radioactive leaks or explosions or fires, he says he was taken off his job. He wasn't fired, but in sort of classic fashion, uh, he was reassigned, reassigned to a basement office that happened to house two working copying machines. Quote, I've been sitting in a basement office now for nearly 16 months, he told senators. And I assume Bechtel's still in charge? Bechtel's still in charge of the project, yes, Senator. And everyone sees you go to work in the basement with no windows? Yes, yes, ma'am. And knows that you are not allowed to work even though you're there on site and getting paid? Correct. So everyone, so every day you are an example to all the workers there, whether they're federal employees or Bechtel employees, don't say anything or you and two will be banished to the basement. Yes, Senator, very directly. It's a very visible example of what happens if you speak up. It's just unbelievable to me that we've allowed this to occur. Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri. So Dr. Tamasitis works for URS. URS works for Bechtel. Bechtel works for the Energy Department. Uh, we called all three of those entities today to respond. URS told us they fully support Dr. Tamasitis' right to raise safety concerns, but they say they do not agree with his assertion that he suffered retaliation for doing so. Bechtel told us, too, that, that safety and quality are Bechtel's top priorities, and they do not tolerate retaliation or harassment in any form against anyone who raises a concern. Bechtel said they strongly dispute Dr. Tamasitis' version of the facts. The Department of Energy similarly told us that retribution for raising safety concerns will not be tolerated. They said they are committed to continuing to improve our approach to safety at Hanford. All of those statements are available in full at mattoblog.com tonight if you want to see them. But I, but I would just say two things here. Well, three things here. First, did I mention this is the most contaminated site on the continent? 
and it's right on the Columbia River. All right, so that's first. Uh, but also, th there's also been an, an independent look-see into this situation already. Your tax dollars pay for something called the Defense Nuclear Facilities Safety Board. And frankly, you're psyched that your tax dollars pay for that because it's a board of nuclear scientists that's appointed by the White House and that is independent from anyone else. It's their job to look into safety issues at nuclear stuff that the Energy Department is responsible for. They looked into what's going on at Hanford and they said this. The investigative record demonstrates that both DOE and contractor project management behaviors reinforce a subculture that deters the timely reporting, acknowledgement, and ultimate resolution of technical safety concerns. And at one point, um, I should say, if the name Bechtel is ringing a bell for you while we've been talking about this, it is probably because you remember Bechtel as one of the giant contractors that got huge rebuilding contracts in Iraq. Uh, billions of dollars worth of Iraq rebuilding contracts. How did Bechtel do there? Quote, Bechtel National met its original objectives on fewer than half of the projects it received as part of a $1.8 billion reconstruction contract, while most of the rest were canceled, reduced in scope, or never completed as designed. Titus and Tom Carpenter is an attorney and executive director of a nonprofit group called Hanford Challenge, which has been a critic of conditions at the Hanford site. Thank you both for being here tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Thomas Seidis, can you describe uh, your safety concerns at Hanford for the, for the non-nuclear engineers among us? Uh, yes, ma'am. The, uh, the major concern is poor mixing in the vessels, the tanks that process the hazardous nuclear waste. And if you have poor mixing in the tank, you can build up solids. The solids can trap hydrogen gas. You can have solids build up on the bottom of the tank, which can lead to a criticality. So the trapping of hydrogen gas can lead to a fire or an explosion, and the solids build up could lead to a criticality. Is that something that is an inevitability of the difficulty of this project, or is, the way, is there a way they could handle that issue more safely if they're willing to take more time or spend more money? It can be addressed. It's a chemical plant, first of all. It's not a nuclear plant, as people describe it. It's a chemical plant that processes a nuclear waste. The waste is like a very thick ketchup with sand in it, and they have to improve the mixing in the vessel. There's a couple ways to do it, and they need to address that in order to make the, the process safe. Mr. Carpenter, let me um, ask you a question. I know that Dr. Thomas Seidis is not the only whistleblower uh, who has come forward from Hanfer. Uh, I know that you have represented a couple of others. What other concerns have, have you uh, known to be raised by whistleblowers at the site? Well, there are several other whistleblowers. <clears throat> One is the manager of nuclear safety uh, at, at the uh, waste treatment plant there. And she was raising concerns about the risks of hydrogen explosion and uh, the fact that it could catch on fire as, and the reducing of safety margins at the site. And uh, this manager recently filed a whistleblower retaliation claim with the Department of Labor. Another engineer um, uh, scientist uh, was working for the Department of Energy. <clears throat> he still works there. And he's been raising concerns about how mixing in the tanks could lead to corrosion uh, and erosion in the, in, the, in the tanks and actually wear a hole through uh, the tanks, which obviously is not good for the nuclear process. That could lead to a leak uh, or a uh, release of radioactive material, which could harm the public. Uh, both of these uh, individuals have said, like Dr. Tamasitis here, that their concerns have been suppressed, uh, that they felt harassment. In terms of, um, Dr. Tamasitis, let me go back to you. In terms of your safety concerns, and again, speaking to a public that may not be, uh, including myself, all that familiar with the processes that you're describing there, what is the greatest risk that you think uh, is possible here based on sort of corners that you've seen cut? Are we looking at something that could be more than the kind of leaks that Hanford has already experienced? Are we talking about something that could be a larger release of radioactive material? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Rachel, we are. If we have poor mixing, we could trap hydrogen gas. We could end up with a fire or explosion, as we saw on the TV at Fukushima in Japan. Um, 
You have more than 40, 40 years experience uh, in this field, doctor, as a, as a highly skilled nuclear engineer. Um, since you have raised these concerns on site, what have you been spending your days doing for these past 16 months? What, what has your job been since you started raising concerns? I was assigned to a basement office, and in the basement, I keep myself busy by reading technical papers and trying to stay abreast of the technologies. Dr. Car uh, Mr. Carpenter, um, one last question for you. Uh, the Department of Energy owns this site uh, and is responsible for, for meeting deadlines and, and trying to keep costs under control. They are also in charge of overseeing that work, overseeing the work to do the cleaning, to do the cleanup at Hanford. That is the hardest thing for me to understand here as somebody who's just concerned about this in terms of safety and good government. Is the Department of Energy effectively overseeing itself here? I'd have to say no, um, and others agree with me. It's hard to be an owner uh, as well as a regulator, uh, and I think most people understand that. Uh, the commercial side of the nuclear industry has a separation between the owner, which is the owner of a nuclear reactor, for instance, and the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which doesn't own anything, right? They're just there to protect the health and safety of the public. Uh, so there's a separation that we expect to happen, but that's not true at Department of Energy facilities. And it's something that the taxpayer, I think, uh, should demand, uh, as well as Congress, that there be a separation uh, so that there isn't a conflict uh, with uh, owning the site and regulating yourself.